Hi everyone and welcome to our presentation, Get Your Player Pulse, Understand and Engage Your Community with an Innovative Multidisciplinary Approach. In this presentation, we'll share with you how we use the Player Pulse Survey, which is our satisfaction survey, to help our development team discover spontaneous ideas and get feedback from our players while using a data-informed approach on our game called Dead by Daylight. The survey gives us the opportunity to measure the impact of in-game features and gauge interest for future in-game needs as the game and our community evolve. For those of you who may not know Dead by Daylight, it's a live, asymmetrical, multiplayer horror game. So on the one side, you have a very powerful killer with unique abilities who wants to kill members of the other team, and on the other side, you have a team of four survivors that need to repair generators to be able to open the door and escape the killer. So your speakers for today will be, first, myself. My name is Clara, and I'm a quantitative user researcher, and I'm also the primary designer and analyst on the Player Pulse survey, currently working on Dead by Daylight. I handle everything from the needs assessment with our stakeholders, all the way to the report presentation and everything in between. Hello everybody, I'm Stefania Pecora. I'm the NLP specialist for the player pools. I'm also a data scientist. I work with Clara and Emily, and I'm a researcher in artificial intelligence. Hi, my name is Emily and I'm a user researcher who specialized in playtesting and also has uh, contributed with the Player Pulse team, with my knowledge of the game, and also the Dead by Daylight community. So here's what we're going to present today. What is the Player Pulse? The design behind the Player Pulse? The usage of NLP? An example with a playtest study and the Player Pulse? And lesson we've learned along the way. So what is the Player Pulse? Here's our definition and how we're preceded over the years. And what does it look like? The Player Poll Survey is a mixed methods survey comprising mainly the quantitative questions with some open-ended questions. The survey is sent out to the community following each DLC release, which is approximately three months in our case, to gather feedback on the latest content and to monitor the game's health. To give a little bit more context, here's an overview on our Player Poll's evolution throughout the years. We started this initiative uh, when the uh, Behavior Interactive built a data team in 2018, which is approximately two years after the launch of the game. The survey was brief and the questions were mainly about overall satisfaction and appreciation of the game. Around 2019, we started to add more questions about game design, social media, engagement, but also potential feature to include in the game. Around 2020 and 2021, we started to use more mixed methods and work closely with the playtest analysts. More on that later in the presentation. In 2022, we introduced um, new technology and methods such as the NLP, which is natural language processing, which has made a huge impact on our way to analyze player polls. We'll tell you more about that later in the presentation as well. And now, five years later, the Player Pulse is the most popular it has ever been. With only our last survey in April 2023, not only we collected 100k responses from our players, but we also started new processes to generate recurring KPI on dashboard and do more ad hoc analysis on our custom questions. As you can see, over the years, the player polls has grown along with our community, and it's still growing. At this point, you're probably asking yourself, how come a survey like the player polls can be so special? Well, what makes it so special is the Dead by Daylight community. The most interesting thing is that we do ad advertise for the player polls, but the main promoter of this survey is the community itself. Since the beginning of Dead by Daylight, the dev team always encouraged the community in their initiative and also to put some structure to distribute information to help player on their onboarding with the incredible work made by our player experience team at Behavior. The player have taken this survey into their own hands and are using it to express the interest, their interest and their passion for our game in their own way. With more than 60k to 80k responses on average every three months, the player polls has become not only an important resources, a resource uh, for our players, but also a space to exchange their ideas and concerns about the game. 
even many that by daylight influencer enc encouraged their community to answer the survey and are also very transparent to share their thoughts. They are encouraging open discussion and to reflect together on the state of the game. As an example, here's one of uh, our Dead by Daylight influencer, Paul Esther, who is taking the player polls during their live stream, which is now also on YouTube. They shared their thoughts uh, about the game and they were also encouraging the community to take the survey as well. With that in mind, it makes sense that the, the community would utilize the player polls to communicate to the dev team their impressions and thoughts. The player does show their engagement with the survey by answering it, but also by interacting with anything that talks about it, whether it is our forum, Reddit, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and even creating some funny meme about it. All right, so now that we've talked a little bit about how our community interacts with our survey, let's talk a little bit about how it's distributed to our community. So the Player Pulse survey is sent out via links posted on our social media platforms and through our in-game news. This allows us to capture players in between matches currently in the game through the in-game news, and also players that are maybe out of the game but see the link pop up on their social media platforms. This also allows us, during the analysis, to filter and segment our respondents depending on where they saw the survey announcement. And overall, the distribution of players who click the survey link in game versus those who come through the social media platforms has been consistent for the past few uh, player pulse survey cycles. Due to the nature of the survey and the fact that it contains both recurring monitoring questions concerning DLCs, game health, and ad hoc questions that I develop for the development team uh, for uh, new feature purposes, the survey can become quite long and heavy to answer. Um, so to alleviate this, I often will randomly assign respondents to one of two versions of the ad hoc questions that I uh, develop to prevent survey fatigue, but also to leverage the large response rate that we get. Um, as we saw, we get between 60 and 80,000 people, and so we're able to leverage that and alleviate the survey for most players by splitting it in two. And often, uh, or most of the recurring questions, so the DLC questions and the game health questions, will be shown to all respondents to ensure consistency across releases. So let's talk a little bit about now the data that comes behind the player pulse and how we're able to use that data to provide actionable insights to our stakeholders. So there are three main sources of data that we use to provide insights to our partners. The main source, which is about 80% of the insights that we provide, will come from the survey itself. So all of the recurring monitoring questions and the ad hoc questions that I develop and the scales that I'm able to develop for the team as well. In some cases, we're then also able to bring in our data analysts who are able to provide more objective data related to the survey um, and provide context for some of the player feedback we receive based on in-game behaviors that we're able to observe. We're also able to include a few open box responses for some topics of interest or very important topics that allow players to express themselves a lot more in detail. And with the help of natural language processing, we're able to analyze thousands and thousands of lines of comments efficiently to provide that context alongside their survey responses and their perceptions that they provide in the Player Pulse survey. Now we wanted to present a little bit of an example of some of the data, uh, the results from this survey that also uh, was used as great feedback for one of the teams that we have on Dead by Daylight. So our recurring questions uh, concerning DLC and game health allow us to track similar metrics over time as new content launches and also to monitor the effect of updates to existing content. And so this is what exactly we're presenting on the right. So on the graph on the right, we have some data summarizing the impact of the size of one of the maps that currently exists in the game um, on various game activities, such as finding generators and finding hooks. And so we were able to compare the data that was collected at launch, so when the map was first released in 2021, and then ask those same questions again in 2022 after a reworked version of the map was released based on player feedback that happened in that time, and then some of the work that our level design team was able to provide. And so asking the same questions at two different time points allowed us to directly measure the impact of these updates to existing game content even years after release. Um, and so in the case of this map, it was extremely positive. So the blue dots represent the data when it was collected at launch, as uh, so in 2021, and the red dots when the data was collected after the reworked map in 2022. And as we can see, that the size of the map and how it affected these different activities is trending far more to the just right or the middle of the scale that we provided compared to the original map. Um, and so players responded really well to this reworked map. Our level design team was able to take this feedback and then use it um, for their roadmap for the next uh, couple of maps that they were thinking of releasing. 
Okay, now we can talk about how we can improve the user research process using some data science. So in particular, natural language processing. So you know that in survey, you can ask two types of questions. You have the closed-ended question and the open-ended one. So the difference between the two is that the closed-ended question have predefined replies that you can aggregate while the open-ended question need to be read one by one, unless you use natural language processing. So how do you use uh, natural language processing here for the player pools? So uh, we have an end-to-end machine learning system that works with a bidirectional encoder representation from Transformer, uh, which is a pre-trained large language model from Google. You can call it BERT. So the system works in four phases. First of all, uh, we try to understand what is a word as a unit and what are the words in a sentence, both as a word and a contextual word. So the words and its context. Then we try to recognize what is an opinion and what is its subject. Of course, you can have different subjects and different opinion in a document and in a sentence too. Then we associate the subject to its opinion. So basically we try to understand what is the relation strength between these two units, these two words. And finally, once this relation has been found, we try to predict the sentiment. So we have positive, negative and neutral sentiment. So why you should use NLP in your UR projects? So NLP gives the opportunity to have open-ended questions so that players can express themselves as they want and we can receive their natural feedback. Plus, if you use NLP, you can basically uh, think about how to improve your questions, how to get your insights while the machine do the work. So we can compare the fact that uh, humans can process on average 15 sentences per minute, while machines can compile on average 625 sentences per minute. However, for every technology, we need to pay attention when we use NLP. So we need to do some domain adaptation and expert knowledge is required. So the model is sensitive to the context of words and the text needs to be pre-processed to avoid unnecessary noise. And of course, our work doesn't end at the model. So NLP can be um, used along with other data science uh, models, we can have more and more insights, we can have in-game or game-related information that can be used always to enhance our insights. And of course, we do the work because we want to convey a message, so we want to create actionable results for our stakeholders. So basically, we can say that we start from an NLP model and our data, of course. We have our topics that are retrieved. For each topic, we have subtopics. And then for each subtopic, we can measure the sentiment. So are people discussing about this subtopic in a positive or in a negative way? And after that, we can shape the insights for our stakeholders. Like we said earlier, the player polls has been also a very helpful tool to build protocol and process for our playtests. Here's an example of one of our collaboration with the player polls and the play test team. We wanted to test a current optional killer feature in our game called the Momento Moris. In short, this feature can be obtained by the player within our progression system. They can equip it and put it in their loadout before a match. The Momento Mori like like a finishing action. It can instantly kill a survivor during a match. To give a little bit more context, this feature has been included in the game since launch and we only made changes once in 2020. However, we never tested that feature specifically since the launch of the game. Plus, 
This feature has been a very important point of discussion about fun and toxicity within the community throughout the years. Knowing that, one of the main objectives for this playtest was to test a new Momento Mori prototype and to find out if it would be seen as more fun, less unfair, and less toxic compared to the current version of the feature. To do so, we surveyed the community first with the player polls. We wanted to know broadly their impression and perspective about that feature in terms of fun, fairness, and toxicity. What we found is that compared to what it was before, the players seem to find that feature way more fun and fairer and slightly less toxic than before. While testing the prototype, we wanted to know if we were see seeing the same results with a group of playtesters. So before the test, we asked them the same question that we asked in the player polls. And also, we asked them what fun, fair, and toxic mean to them when we talk about Memento Mori. After they tested the prototype, we asked them again the same question, but based on their experience with the prototype. After testing the feature, the participants found it more fun because it provided different interesting gameplay experience. They perceive it at, as less toxic because it may also prevent unpleasant behaviors that were associated with the Memento Mori. And in terms of fairness, we received mixed feedbacks. On one hand, it was perceived slightly fairer, but on the other hand, it has the potential to affect negatively the survivor in certain contexts. So with both the prototype test and the player pulse responses, we were able to find that players might find that the prototype would take away some element of fairness. Currently, the rules in place for that feature are perceived as are perceived as balanced and not respecting or changing drastically those rules could be seen as unfair for the survivor and can also affect the overall experience while playing Dead by Daylight. In conclusion, it gave us uh, many great insights. It helped us understanding our community better on a specific feature that was considered problematic for many, many years, but also it gave us clearer in guidelines on how the dev could tackle the feature design in the future. All right, now that we've talked a little bit about how we design and implement the survey, how we work with natural language processing, and how it now influences some of our user tests even today, let's talk a little bit about the lessons we've learned along the way to get the player pulse from its inception in 2018 all the way to its current form in 2023. Um, so what might seem kind of an obvious first point is really the wording of the question. However, there's really a true balance that needs to be found between wording the question to meet stakeholder objectives and to make it as valid as possible from a scientific and statistical perspective, but they're also considering how much our community engages with the survey. It's also very important to us that the way questions are worded is understood and appreciated by the community. And so certain words, expressions, or even features in the game uh, need to be handled with care when I write these ad hoc questions because I'm talking to the community through the survey, really. Um, and so the survey is really there for players to be able to express themselves um, and give us the feedback. And so we want to make that uh, process with the least friction and with the most honest view as possible. Um, so I would never want to use misleading questions or create conflicts within the community by using certain words that the community may not understand or appreciate. However, the way I write questions might not be exactly how stakeholders or a feature owner asked for in their regional needs assessment. And so I always make time or it's important for me to make time uh, to be able to walk them through that process of their original needs um, and explain the process as to how I came to writing the question or even explain the scale that I use in view of how the community might view it, depending on how they're talking about that certain feature or certain updates uh, amongst themselves on Twitch, on Reddit, on other social media platforms. Um, most, a lot of our stakeholders may not have the same research background as I do, um, and so it's important to be able to uh, meet their expectations, but also give them the proper context so that everyone's on the same page throughout the survey development until lunch, and so that there are no surprises uh, during the report delivery. Although the player polls has provided many insights only by itself in the past, using playtest reports and in-game data are a great way to maximize the survey insights. By combining other data together, it helps to build our own process, but also to put more context into our reports. We are able to see patterns that are emerging in the community 
and also potential frustration that we can investigate. It all started by having bi-weekly sync about our current research between the play test team and the player pulse team, and we are now including the data analyst as well. It has helped the team to organize around the player pulse and also help organize with our ongoing research projects. So adaptation with NLP. Although NLP has helped tremendously to collect valuable feedback on the player pools, it was also a complex learning curve to incorporate it efficiently in our practices. It is also important to specify that the model, using its first stages, sometimes struggle to capture specific jargon within the game. That's why we opted for a strategy of domain adaptation. In other words, we retrained a part of the model to the specific data that we had. Depending on the amount of data, it's a task that can cost some money and also some time. However, we can also use ad hoc rules that can filter out what we did not capture correctly, and then we can then processing. We learned that we should use one question for each objective to avoid as much as possible the use of open space to simply vent and avoid the question. When players vent, well, unfortunately, there is no magic solution. Uh, we can just classify those concepts in ad hoc categories over time. We also learned that the placement of a question will impact the amount of reply. Finally, it's important to adapt the deliverable to the time and audience. Again, stakeholders are important. We are conveying a message. So there are contexts where a fine granularity, so many, many subtopics, is needed to really understand an issue that is already known in general, but not understood as for its particularities of that moment of time. So thank you for your listening. Thank you for being here today. And we hope that you appreciated what we presented to you today. And especially if you have any questions, if you want to discuss with us, we are there for you. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye.